Hi-de-ho, everyone. I am Nathan Blake, and welcome to my studio walkthrough. Uh, I know it seems kind of funny that we're starting out here in this random uh, area that you've probably seen in a couple of videos before if you've watched my videos, but this is actually in front of my house. And here comes the big reveal and why I wanted to talk to you about my, my recording studio and why I hoped that it would be somewhat encouraging to some of you that you can record, you can make good quality content no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, um, and no matter what kind of uh, living arrangements you're in. Um, so I live here in this little travel trailer. My wife and I own it in its entirety. We bought it uh, ourselves, and so uh, we don't own any debts on it or anything. And we decided to live in it so that we could uh, try to save money and, uh, you know, try to create uh, a, a good living situation for us as far as money is concerned and stuff before we started trying to buy a house or anything like that. We also wanted to make sure that we weren't pouring money into uh, renting something uh, when we could be saving money instead. So come on, let's go into the house or the studio as I like to call it. <laughs> so uh, to start off, here it is here and we've got the, the door here. That's the door. Uh, fans of the show might recognize this as the door uh, that I am shot through in uh, Who Shot Nathan. Uh, that is my lovely wife, Emily, as you have all uh, met and seen before. So we'll go ahead and head in now. This is exhausting on my arm, actually. So this is my first time kind of sort of vlogging like this. So we will see if I can get used to the angles. Props to vloggers. Yep, yep, vloggers. You, you do a great job. So uh, that back there is, that door is the, the, the restroom. There's my fridge. That uh, curtain is just another bed and uh, where we keep like laundry, things like that. There's Emily again. Got our uh, uh, kitchen table right there uh, and stove and things like that. Um, whipping around this side, uh, we've got the bedroom um, and there's like cabinets and things like that in there. Um, this that you see next to me is the blanket that separates my recording studio from a lot of the other stuff. And uh, this is actually an important part of the recording setup. Um, for those of you wondering how you can continue to, how you can use smaller spaces uh, or uh, even larger spaces and try to get better sound quality um, and try to, to like really upgrade your content and stuff, this is a, a great suggestion I have for you. Um, this is, a piece of this pieces of PVC pipe uh, that I have uh, had cut and then arranged into more or less like a coat rack sort of thing. And then you throw a blanket over it. And what that allows you to do is uh, sort of corner off an area, but also that catches a lot of sound. It also blocks light. So obviously I have my door right there. And so if I'm recording in this corner and uh, my there's light spilling in through the door that can mess with my lighting. Now lighting is super important. For instance, right now I have terrible lighting on my face. I'm gonna turn around this way a little bit so you can see me a little better. Lighting is super important. You can do amazing things with good lighting even if you have a bad camera. Uh, the best camera in the world will be terrible if it doesn't have good lighting. And the worst camera in the world will be decent if it has good lighting. I take that back because the worst camera in the world is probably really bad. Um, okay, so we're gonna move over here into the actual recording studio. This is the area that you guys are going to recognize the most. Um, what you will see here, I'll go ahead and sit down here in front of it and move my, my full camera aside. Okay, <clears throat> uh, what you're gonna see here is that this is actually my couch in my, in my house. And there's some, some of my, my computer monitor, my microphone, my desk there. Um, and I have just made this corner into a studio. And you'll see, if I move this way a little bit and angle down so you can see it, this couch is not the prettiest couch in the world. And so what I've done is I have gone and bought a couple of yards of some red fabric and laid it over it and tucked it in so that it looks way better. So, uh, I have this light up here, which I use for backlighting. Again, lighting crazy important. Now that you're seeing me here in my recording setup, you'll see that my my lighting is is much better now because um, I have uh, 
computer's doing an update. I have that recording light right there. Very, very cheap light. Uh, it's, it's not nothing crazy. So, um, you know, even if you're working on a budget, you can make these things work. Um, you can get cheap lighting. You can use lights that you already have in your house. You can do things. The PVC pipe that I showed you that I'm using to hold up a blanket so that I get better sound quality and I, I can control the lighting in my recording area. That was two and a half dollars worth of pipe. I went to a plumbing store. I said, I need one five inch cut, uh, two five inch cut, uh, five inch, two five foot cuts and one four inch cut, a four foot cut. And then uh, the feet parts, which, you know, the, a T and, and four one, one foots and made it into uh, the little little feet that you can uh, see there. I, like I, th I think I have it in the camera shot. Yeah, they're in yep. there for a second. <laughs> so that is how I did that. And what that did is it makes me mix where I can control my light, but it also absorbs sound so I get less echo and things like that. And I, the reason I wanted to show you the, this and, and talk about it is because you can do so much with so little if you need to. And so uh, what it comes down to is professionalism and appearances and things like that. You know, if, if, if people see that, that you're putting in the effort, regardless of what your living situation is or, or how your setup is, if you're putting in that effort, people care, people want to, people are interested in it. They say, wow, that guy's actually trying. And that makes a huge difference. Now I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about some of my actual equipment now, because I'm, I know some of you are are interested in some of that. So this is my microphone here. This is uh, simply just a blue Yeti. Um, I've got it on this uh, boom thing so that I can have it lowered down to right here. And I've got a, a pop filter that's attached that goes in front of it, which for those of you who don't know much about sound, that catch catches the air whenever you go and it keeps it from making that wind sound. Uh, I mean, it'll still make some sound when you blow on it, but it doesn't it's not near as bad. Um, meanwhile, there is my camera over there. Here, I'll just pull my camera over. Okay, here is my camera. That is a Lumix G7 uh, mirrorless camera. Uh, it films in uh, 4K at 30 frames per second or uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second, which I usually film at the 1080p because I like the smoother look of the 60 frames over the uh, resolution that is more important to me. So uh, some of you who watch me during streams have asked, why does Nathan keep looking up at the ceiling over and over again? Well, the reason for that is that I built this desk. This desk is a Nathan Blake original. I have attached it to the wall right there or the cabinet there. It's kind of difficult to see, but uh, there I have attached to the cabinet and the, and the wall right here. And so then I've got my monitor up there. And then whenever the time came that I was like, I think I need a dual monitor setup, especially for live streaming. The question became, where do I have space for a second monitor? So what I did is, is I attached a second monitor up there to the side of the cabinet. You can see all my pot holders and stuff behind it. Um, and that allowed me to have the dual monitor set up, even though I don't really have the space for that. And so now I'm able to keep chat up here and keep the game down here and move things between the two screens and stuff like that. Whenever I'm working on things, I can watch a show or something like that on that top screen and keep working on this bottom one. Um, for streaming up until recently, I was using this camera. This is the, the uh, Logitech uh, C922, I believe is what it is, Pro Streamer. And that one is one of the best streaming cameras that you can get uh, webcam wise. And it is, it's really good. Um, and it's not very expensive. It's under hundred dollars. So, so it's totally doable. Um, one last couple of things, if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. For those of you who are looking for a budget camera, since uh, not, all, not all of you will be able to get one of those like nicer mirrorless cameras or DSLRs like, like I have, which I got as a gift. Um, the, what I was using for a few videos uh, in there, which I maybe even might throw up some footage of, of those so you can see what they look like, was this. This is the Acaso uh, 7200, uh, oh no, 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 7000. The Acaso 7000 uh, 4K action camera. 
It's basically knockoff GoPro. Um, I found it by searching best knockoff GoPros and I found that. And basically I started using it and it has some bugs and it overheats sometimes. And so there, there were some definite issues. Um, if you go back and watch Getting Over It by Bennett Foddy on my channel, me being so frustrated in that video is because that camera lost all of my footage for that playthrough. And so I had to redo it, which was very frustrating. Um, but what you'll see is, is that those videos are much higher quality. And if you have a camera like that, that records its own video, uh, for itself and saves it to a, a, um, SD card. What that allows you to do is then take that, sync it up with your audio and your video from your game, and then you're able to move that picture around and get those really fun edits that all the all the big YouTubers do with all the the wacky moving faces and stuff like that. And it's really it's a it's a change that you can do that'll really just level up your your quality and stuff and just bring it to a whole new level. Um, that camera was like sixty dollars. And so for me to have a, a camera that shot in a 1080 at 60 frames per second or at 4K at 30 frames per second and then allow me to do those fancy edits and stuff like that was really, really cool. Uh, and at that price is totally doable. And very, very helpful. Um, so, yeah, so that's a little bit of of my studio setup. And that's a that's a here. Give me just a second. There we go. I'm hands free now. So that's a little bit of my studio setup and now you can kind of see where I'm coming from and what I'm doing. And the main thing that I hope you can take from this is that uh, it just takes a little bit of effort and, and a, a couple of small purchases and, and you're able to really dress whatever you're using up. And it creates that level of professionalism that people are looking for and that people crave in these situations. because. Um, I've talked about it before, but whenever you're creating your content and whatever your content is, whether you're making videos or podcasts or art or whatever you're doing, um, you're, you're looking for something you can do that's going to set yourself apart from other people. So one of the big things that you can do there is find your niche and things like that. But even when you get into that area, you're competing with so many people that it, it makes it difficult. So the most important thing that you can do then to set yourself apart from the people who are in the same field as you is create professionalism and professionalism is something that you know when you see uh, and that a lot of us are taking it in subconsciously and so or rather I'm sorry you don't know when you see it you're taking it in subconsciously but you know when it's not there when you see someone who's unprofessional you immediately take note and you're like eh, I don't know doesn't seem like a professional but if, if things look professional, if they're, if they're good content, then you're allowing those barriers to be broken down and people are willing to go ahead and watch what you are presenting. And then it's up to you to be entertaining enough or create good enough content or, or, or whatever it is that you do, whatever your art form is. So that's my biggest thing is do whatever you can do to increase your professionalism. Now also be genuine. So I increased my professionalism by having sound foam and putting this red cloth on my on my chair and having as good of lighting as I I could and everything but genuineness is important too and so I'm being genuine with you guys right now and and letting you know I record out of a travel trailer I live in a travel trailer now I'm moving before long so you know yay that's gonna be super exciting because we're gonna be able to get more done but I wanted to let you know that because a I hope that you can see how no matter what situation you're in, you can still make things look good and you can still try your best and you can still even be at least moderately successful, at least as successful as I've been so far. And B, I wanted you to know why sometimes I flounder on things like doing skits and things like that. I have very little space. I showed you the whole trailer, the whole studio two seconds ago whenever I turned around. And so I don't really have a huge recording area or a lot of space. And so it does make it difficult to do certain types of content, certain types of skits and things like that. And so that's something that, that uh, whenever we get to move and we're gonna be in a real house before long uh, is, is gonna be really cool and really helpful and gonna have more space to do skits and things like that. And that, I'm excited to do that for you guys. So anyway, I hope that this was encouraging to you. 
I hope that, that you uh, enjoy getting to, to see a little bit of, a little bit more about who I am and, and what I'm doing here at my house um, and in my studio here in the corner. <laughs> And uh, I really, really thank you all for supporting me and for, for making some, some, some schmuck uh, who records in the corner of his travel trailer have a, have a little bit of uh, self-esteem, a little bit of uh, encouragement as far as making content that he loves and people enjoying it. So um, I really appreciate all of you and I, I can't thank you enough for, for 1,300 subscribers, I think 1,350 now. It, it's going up too fast. It's difficult for me to <laughs> keep track of. So, but I want to thank you all so much for that. And I hope that I can continue to give you content that not only uh, encourages you, but that it also just makes you smile and makes you laugh. And uh, yeah, so that's about all I have to say about my studio and, and about that. Uh, if you want any quick updates on the channel, you'll notice I'm clean shaven. Um, I'm, I'm baby Nathan, um, is that we're going to be moving in, in some different directions, doing a lot of cool things. I'm hoping to have more edits and everything that I do, more videos coming out per day. Um, I'm going to be trying to have uh, actual underlying stories to most things that I do, including Let's Plays and stuff. And so, you, so you, you saw the first little hint at that in uh, Who Shot Nathan, and you're going to continue to see that sort of thing, not me dying repeatedly, no worries, um, as I continue to make content uh, where there will be narratives surrounding things that I do. And yes, even me shaving uh, is going to play into things. So I'm very excited about that, very excited to see where we go with that as I move and get more space, the skits and things like that will be able to get bigger and we'll be able to do more with them. So. Um, I just wanted to let you all know that uh, things are going to keep moving forward. Things are going to keep growing here on the channel. I'm going to keep trying to create better content. And uh, I really thank you all for being so supportive as my content does shift and change and do different things and stuff because you're all super amazing and I'm all, I'm, I'm so thankful for all of you. So that is all that I have to say for today. Um, so thank you so much for going on this little tour of my studio. Um, for now, this is uh, Nathan, Blake, and Emily signing off for Nathan Blake Games, and we will see you in the next one. Sayonara! <laughs>